I'm Midnight Agent Raw. And I'm Okame. We are the Super Media Bros Podcast, and we are founding members of the Odd Pods Media Network. Call the SWAT team? Who the hell are the Super Media Bros? Who are? All that and more. There's a shark behind you, dude. Where? Oh. Super Media Bros. <laughs> It's a good thing you had that carrot on you. <laughs> this rule of thumb, if you're ever in shark waters, just shove a fucking carrot in his mouth. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to episode 146 of the Super Media Bros Podcast. I'm Midnight Agent Raw. Oh. <laughs> and I'm Okame. And you're oh, Kame. Oh, Kame. <laughs> Who the uh, oh, hell? Who the oh, oh. <laughs> I'm Kami. Oh. Sorry, my memory lapsed when carrots are introduced in my life. <laughs> carrots are, Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is the Amazon animal atrocity, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's bullshit. Yeah. There's a lot of movies to unpack here. So we, we had the displeasure of sitting through House Shark, Arachnoquake, Tsunami, and Sand Serpents. I think that, that, that's the whole episode right there. That's the review. Now, we're not going to deep dive into all four of them because clearly it's going to take fucking forever. Oh, we'd be here all night and I don't want to be here all night talking about four movies that probably all premiered on sci-fi at some point. Yeah, it's just going to be a um, very brief highlight reel, basically. What do you want to go with first? We might as well start with the first one we watched. House Shark. Yep. Directed by Ron Bonk. <laughs> Ron. Oh. Right in the head. Because he got hit in the head and was like, oh, I got an idea. <laughs> Make a movie about a shark in a house. House. <laughs> now, note to everybody, I introduced him to that meme just now, and he is laughing his fucking ass off. That's the greatest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life, dude. What the fuck? It's just some puffer fish eating a carrot stick and just, oh, oh. How is it? Awesome. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that would have been a better sound effect than this fucking house shark made in this movie, because all you could hear was its fucking teeth clicking. And no, it wasn't knocking on the door to get into the house. It was already in the house. Let's make quick work of this, shall we? There's a dude named Frank who apparently was an ex-sheriff or some ship that is living in this fucking house with his kid. Uh, I guess he's divorced or separated or whatever. He's going out on this date with this chick he met on whatever this universe's tender is and mm-hmm. leaves the kid with a fucking babysitter. And the babysitter decides to, after tucking the kid in... <laughs> Gets undressed in the bathroom and takes a shit or something. I don't know what the fuck she does. Yeah, like reading Moby Dick on the couch and then goes to take a shit and reads the cliff notes of Moby Dick on the shitter. Because why the fuck not? And then immediately gets sucked in to the fucking toilet. Right, and I thought the funny part about this beginning, besides that, was when Frank comes home from his date. He's got like a goatee, but it's actually just a bunch of pubes. And the fucking chick was like, oh, your mouth game is on point or some shit like that. It was so gross. Yeah. This movie is very self-aware, by the way. Just throw that out there. And then two months later, after he discovers the body, uh, the house is for sale, and him and his son are living in the fucking backyard in a tent. Eating beans. I know. It's so funny. You were pointing this shit. It's like they could drive to the fucking store. Yeah, they clearly could have eaten more than just a can of beans a day. But it makes it funnier to me. So, okay, long story short, he goes and he researches this fucking shark at a library, and there's been other cases of shark attacks or some such bullshit. Specifically house sharks. Yeah. Not just shark attacks in general. The realtor is trying to sell this fucking house or whatever because Frank has second thoughts about it. And he's just like, oh, maybe I don't want to sell the house, blah, blah, blah. Because of the shark. Right. But the realty company is just like, no, we, we got to sell this fucking house. So who does he send out? But Darth Vader, a.k.a. Darth Squanto. Mm-hmm. Some Native American dude who is legitimately dressed like fucking Darth Vader. I mean, force choking and everything. And has lines pulled from Star Wars, uh, New Hope, like pretty much the whole entire time he's introduced in there. And then there's this dude named Zachary who's from Germany. We'll get to why that's not true later. But he comes over because Frank's like, oh, this guy's 
like a house shark expert. And he shows up and it's the stupidest fucking shit ever. <laughs> they go to look at this fucking house, right? And earlier there was this couple that was in there trying to buy this house or they were looking at buying this house and they keep making out every time there was nobody there. And the chick looks at the dude and she's just like, I don't want these people to catch you with your finger up my butt or some shit like that. <laughs> and they get killed by the shark. So when Darth Squanto, he gets fucking killed. And then it's just Zach and Frank and Zach walks up to one of the fucking windows and the dude in question like slaps against the fucking window. And I just thought this was hilarious because just very calmly. Well, who's that? <laughs> oh, it's just John. <laughs> but they discovered that he had a fucking piece of flesh around his finger and it was his girlfriend's anus. <laughs> yeah. It's like they're asking, what would he have an anus around his finger for? What do you have an asshole around his finger for? Asshole. That's the other guy that gets introduced uh, that is at the, the realty company is Abraham. It was very obviously supposed to be Abraham Lincoln, but is more like an alcoholic Abraham. Yeah. Which this scene was fucking hilarious because Frank somehow finagles $10,000 plus meals and drinks out of this guy. When he was trying to get paid by Frank to get this job. No, he actually switched it around. And it was like, oh, yeah, you got a deal. Yeah. And the, basically, like, Abraham is set up to be the Captain Ahab of this fucking movie. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, has the shark even come into scene yet? Like, have we actually seen the shark at this point? Mm -hmm. Just the blue filter. Yeah. Every time the shark shows up, it's like a blue filter on the fucking camera lens. Mm -hmm. It's so stupid. But anyway, the next day in the front yard, because they wound up drinking or whatever, and we were laughing at this scene. So Abraham wakes up and throws boiling fucking water on Frank and Zach in the tent. Yeah, he was making coffee and he just like splashed the rest of the water on him and didn't even touch their fucking face, but apparently it burnt their faces. And then the face scarring magically disappears in the next scene. Just fucking beautiful. It says shark powers. They basically plan to enter this house and kill this fucking thing. Well, the German dude has a fucking laser or some shit with a compact disc on the outside of it, which was really stupid looking, but it was fucking hilarious. He's like, oh, it'll, it'll stop the shark, blah, blah, blah. It looked like one of those like old school like space layers as you get in a little cheap aisle in the dollar store. With the 10 sound effects on mm -hmm. it. Dude, I kind of want one now. And yeah, like you said, it had like a CD around the barrel on the very base of the barrel. <laughs> it was so ridiculous. But I have to admit, if that was supposed to be some kind of like throwback to the 90s and shit, it was pretty fucking inventive just to be like, oh, look at what we, like, hey kids, look what we used to have to listen to music on. Mm -hmm. CDs and shit. So... The running, there's a running gag where Frank is supposed to be explaining why he left the police force, but it never comes across because every time he goes to tell the story, somebody fucking falls asleep. Mm -hmm. So they camp out in this bathroom. The very same bathroom that the babysitter died in, by the way. And the corpse, or the, what's left of her, is still there. The, the remnants. <laughs> the, the toilet remnants? Yeah. But what cracked us up was the damn, um, the toilet seat cover that was still on. It was just like this white, all white bathroom just stained with pink and red from all this shit right so frank what does he do he goes and just like i gotta take a piss now you know there's another bathroom in this fucking place so he just goes and pisses in the toilet and the the yeah the the chunks yeah he just r kelly's the fuck out of this poor girl yeah because that's the thing like these people people these people yeah know that this girl died but they did not even clean the scene at all they just left it as is for these months that passed I mean, there's even police tape and shit on the door. Well, that don't fucking matter. No, it don't matter at all. None of this matters. Well, let's not forget how much Abraham is just the comical entourage here because every time this man presents himself or he talks or whatever like that, he has this very drunk, like Sean Connery. But it's a little more slurred, I guess, and a little more like kind of sporadic. Well, remember, he hasn't been sober in 27 years. Pretty or much. However the fuck long he says. It was something like that. And like you said, he has this very Captain Ahab just like mentality where it's like, I, I have to hunt the shark. Because <laughs> this guy got mauled by one years and years ago and lost all of his body parts and got him reattached. Well, another aspect <laughs> <laughs> this guy has is he has this obsession with touching people's faces. Oh, yeah. And he'll literally, like, he just gets so, like, relief from just doing it. He's just, like, and just puts their finger in their face. Like, God damn it, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Which that comes into play later. It's actually funny. Yeah. Because we forgot to mention, they lock themselves. Now, this, this is something I thought was fucking stupid. Okay, so they lock themselves into this house, and Abraham swallows the key. 
So eventually he has to shit it out so they can get out of the house. But the point is that they lock themselves into the house from the inside. They could just unlock the fucking door handle and go outside. Or it was reversed. Like the actual lock on the outside was on the inside. Yeah, unless it's a two-sided lock, it doesn't make any fucking sense at all. No. But anyway, their plan to lure the shark out, and I think we actually have seen the shark by now because it pops out of the toilet and fucking tries to attack them. And this is just like a giant foam shark. And it's fucking funny. This is like Velocipaster levels of just greatness as far as like the giant creature is concerned. Oh, clicking every time it opens its mouth. Yeah, there's no sounds. It just clicks its teeth and... They're just looking at it like, what the fuck? Like, they all have guns and ammo, but they don't shoot this fucking thing. Yeah, because they get cornered in the bathtub when this thing pops out of the toilet, and they're all screaming like bitches the entire time, not doing anything to defend themselves. Right, and then the plan to lure this goddamn shark out, they find a shark outfit, and it's a female shark outfit, and they want to dress up in the shark suit and present as female so the shark will come to fuck it (laughs) so they can shoot it. But it's funny because I think Frank is the one that winds up with the suit on and it's the most dumbass looking shit ever. It's pretty much like a pink dress with like shark looking pieces here and there. It's like a onesie, like a shark onesie that you could buy at Walmart and just zip up. Except the the headpiece is really like overly shark. (laughs) Like it's overly done and shit. Frankie shark. (laughs) Exactly. Fucking the shark has a laser gun at some point. Yeah, like there's so many twists and turns about this film that I don't understand. Right. Like the fact that the German guy, Zachary, winds up just being an impersonator. He's not really German and he's some kind of fucking like marine scientist or some shit that helped in some experiment where the shark or like several animals were exposed to what was it, plutonium or some bullshit. And then they were radiated to grow larger and the shark wound up being an accident and somehow got a laser. (laughs) Yeah, the the shark somehow is like Dr. Evil's wet dream just walking around this fucking house because it's a shark with a freaking laser beam and Mm -hmm. shooting shit. But apparently the shark can't even be stopped other than having plutonium injected into it to blow it up. I mean, even then it didn't blow up because I think at one point they had to like come up with a plan B. I think plan B was when they found out that uh, Zach was an impersonator. They put the shark costume on him and stuck him in like a dog kennel and they were just going to like use him as the bait. But then somehow, just later, he's in the fucking basement because the shark drags him away and through the sink. But somehow he's still alive. Literally drags him through the sink drain. But oh no, he did. He's just covering a shark cum. Yep. He actually plans and plots to flood the whole entire house by stuffing the main drain with like clothes and just busting the damn water heater. And now Frank and Abraham are going down into the basement underwater, air quoting really loudly on that one, because <laughs> this is so it's stupid. literally just a water filter over the camera, like over the actual shot and them walking in the water, like underwater, basically. And they're acting like they're swimming, like they're doing the whole motion and moving slowly and shit. It is the funniest goddamn thing ever. Mm-hmm. Like they, they obviously knew like that this was so self-aware. And I think that's what I liked the most about this is that this sequence was very self-aware. Well, then they pull the fucking drain after this long fight and somehow everything is completely dried off, which is again, funny as fuck. And on, honestly, like I'm stopping right here. Cause I've actually put this in my notes at this point. This movie is way too long. Like we've skipped over a lot of useless exposition at this point. Yeah, because really all we wanted to watch was what this shark was going to do to these people. At some point, there was more house than shark. Yeah. So at some point, Abraham shits the key out or tries to shit the key out. And this is where he's touching Frank's face. He's like, I can't use the bathroom unless I touch your face. (laughs) It released my anxiety. (laughs) So stupid. If that only would work in real life, like just touching someone's face. just To take a shit? Eases tension. (laughs) Well, I mean, rather the face than the fucking butthole. That's still funny, though. Like, Unless you want to blow up with a freaking, like, ring of a- anus on you. I was going to say, one dude dies with a ring of asshole on his finger, and the other dude dies with a ring of somebody's cheek on it. Mm-hmm. Not a butt cheek, but their face cheek. So Abe gets eaten by the shark, at which point, basically, Frank has to just walk over and just, like, stick his hand up his ass to drag the fucking key out of his asshole, and he just gets shit on, literally gets shit sprayed all over him. Yep. Stabs the shark with this fucking plutonium. But it's funny, he keeps shooting the shark, but until he shoots Abe's foot, like he finally shoots Abe in the foot and then the whole house and everything, literally the whole neighborhood blows the fuck up. 
Yeah, because it wasn't that where he was concentrated with so much alcohol over the decades, and that was the most like volatile part of his body. Yeah, because at some point he was like, "Oh man, I'm sober." Blah blah blah. Because during the credits, Frank is like, because the whole neighborhood is leveled. Like, there's just nothing there. So Frank is actually picking Abraham up and putting him in this bucket, just pieces, because he's still alive. Obviously, he can be reassembled. The chum bucket. Exactly. And then in the post credits, Zach is still alive, but he's got like this shark in his stomach, a la Alien, where it's like trying to burst out of his chest. And you're just like, really? Do we really need a sequel? And that's fucking hell, Shark. Again, yeah. you're probably going to be sitting there listening, like, that's it? It's like, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. We're not even kidding. Two hour film condensed into 20 minutes. Now let's get into a fucking one hour and 20 something minute film that felt like it was three goddamn hours long. And that's called my girl. I mean, I'm sorry. Tsunami. <laughs> Speaking of bees. Yeah. The bees. Tsunam hornets. Tsunam. Whatever. We don't know because they're clearly not bees. And it's not even a tsunami. No. It's literally not a tsunami. It is a CGI, poorly CGI cyclone of black things flying around. Yeah. It's so bad. This movie opens with this chick in the woods making a cross out of tree limbs. And then they cut to Nigeria somewhere where these people are in this forest finding bee nests. And the the fucking nests look like uncircumcised dicks. And they're just goopy, oozy. (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) But yeah, go back to the States and we have this flashback of some random guy we don't even know having his running sequence from somebody. There, there's really no explanation as to what's going on here. And there's this other guy on the phone, like trying to figure out what is being said over the phone. And they meet up eventually. And this silhouette of a cop basically just pops out of nowhere and shoots the guy that's on the phone, which is just kind of funny. Like he, what the fuck did he do to get shot? Like on the spot? Like, was he using too many minutes or something? Yeah. He had T-Mobile or something. Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> If you have T-Mobile Sprint, you're under arrest. That's it. He just gets shot. Yeah. He better. The other guy was on Sprint because he was running. Yeah, he was wearing yellow too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's running down the highway. Can you hear me now? Good. What up, T? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Dude gets fucking shot. He's like, I told you to buy them extra minutes, motherfucker. Why are you with that carrier? <laughs> you know the customer service sucks. Shit sucks ass. But this whole entire thing was a dream sequence. Yeah, because this dude fucking, he wakes up, the dude and his his wife or girlfriend, and then like rip off Steve Aoki, because that's what this guy looked like. No joke. And then this other dude that they live with was like Steve Aoki. They're all in yellow, and they see the city building. Like, this is the only time that you see like the city on fire or buildings blowing up, and it's all stock footage. These assholes fucking leave the apartment, and they leave their fucking dog behind, so fuck these people on principle. Immediately, yes. And I hate it because like that very last shot of the dog, he just looked at him and he was just like, why, why did you leave me? And they fucking fade out. And you're just like, God damn, like I want to just scoop the dog up and just bring him home. Just hear the Sarah McLaughlin song playing in the background. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> in the arms. In the arms. Of an angel. <laughs> so oh, oh, away. God I'm damn it, dude. But really though, these these fuckers they leave or whatever and then they're just on the side of the road somewhere like in the middle of fucking Bumfa Guam and these rednecks roll up and they all have a standoff with each other and then the female cop shows up the only fucking cop in this movie shows up points at them and she's like put your like you know she's like hey put your weapons down and she knows the redneck dude so they put their fucking weapons down and then the black couple and Steve Aoki put their fucking weapons down, but they are the only people that actually get walked up to and take their fucking guns from them. And then the rednecks are able to hold on to their fucking AK 47s and shit. This, this is like, is this really like what, this is what's happening now. Yeah. This is like a good a representation of what's happening. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's fucking ridiculous. But anyway, that <laughs> so dumb. They are going to just like leave. Everybody's just going to, you know, gather up in one vehicle and go, but here come the bees. But just for a few seconds. Yeah, they uh, kill one of the rednecks. Strawberry jam again. And the rest of them take off in the fucking cop car. That's what I fucking laughed at. Like, okay, so the, the, the cop and 
Jesse or some shit. One of the mm. guys. I don't fucking remember his name. Anyway, yeah, they, I think it was Jesse, the the redneck. Yeah, so they they fucking leave, and then um, the couple and Steve Aoki are fucking driving in their car. I just love that you keep calling them couple and Steve Aoki. Well, I mean, it's I, I don't know their fucking names. It doesn't matter, but still, it's just funny. That's what I'm thinking. It doesn't. You know what? This pissed me off. I think they were driving a Camaro, and they should have been driving like the Bumblebee Camaro. Mm-hmm. Like I would have redeemed this whole movie, but I think they're driving like a fucking silver car. Yep. They hit a bee. Like, I swear to God, they drove 20 feet. Now, mind you, they're in the desert somewhere, like flat ground. This is like somewhere in not Miami, somewhere else. There's a cliff out of nowhere because they drive 20 feet. They hit a fucking bee. And I probably, that bee is probably not even the size of a fucking solo cup. And they hit this motherfucker and it, they, they careen and almost drive off the road. So, yeah, they perilously get out one yeah. by one because they have to shift the weight and everything so it doesn't fall over forward. It's so stupid. So they all get out of the fucking vehicle and then there's another swarm of bees. And this, th- this is the best part of the movie because of the fucking meme. The cop just stops and she's just like, run. <laughs> like you just picture fucking a wall nation right there. Just run. <laughs> That's it. That's what happens when they get on stage. Run. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Steve Aoki fucking dies. He but, got up in their business. But what made me laugh is the cops like, well, they act like normal wasps and bees. <laughs> the bitch, the fuck they do. Be a dead son of a bitch. <laughs> you be a dead son of a bitch. I tell you that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dude has a fucking dream about his friend being shot again. And we both called this. We were just like, I bet it's the cop. Mm-hmm. Because it fucking is. So Steve Aoki or Steve Aoki B comes back as a fucking zombie. Which ugh, this is the plot twist. Whenever these insects, I'm, I'm not even going to call them bees or wasps because I don't even fucking know they are at this point. But anytime these insects kill their victims, they turn them into zombies. Bees. And we figured out this is exactly where the movie got around the CG budget. They're just like, fuck it, we'll, we'll make, you know, zombies out of these people. So, like, are we watching Tsunami or, like, a zombie movie? Because... Tsunambie. And the other part about this movie that really fucking pissed me off is we, we noticed something about the last three films. They all had some kind of like agenda tied to them or they had some kind of like, um, I don't know, like a hidden concept or not so much a hidden concept more of a, um, a theme, I guess. Yeah. And this is, the, we find this out like, cause they're starting to walk or whatever. And the lens keeps changing on the, uh, the lens filter. This looks like a fucking Western yeah, they're pretty, this much, point. they're pretty much walking through like what you said. It was like, what was it, Eastern Colorado? Or yeah, Western? okay, this was this was in like Southeast Colorado, I think. But yeah. that's I forgot that's where they filmed it. But dude, like we're 30 minutes in and there's no fucking explanation or any kind of exposition as to what's going on. All we know is, is these people are running from these insects that are turning people into zombies. Right, and then what winds up fucking happening is they explain that this is some kind of like biblical disaster. Because God is mad. So instead of locusts, they're like zombie bees. Yeah. So they, they wind up going to this fucking house, okay? And I laugh my ass off at this because the way the cop fucking, she's just like, is anybody home? And just fucking kicks the door in. And then, like, dude, you were cracking me up because you, like, Cody actually gets up off the sofa at this point as we're watching this and starts doing this, like, forward, like, longing like long ass leg crab walk because the way this bitch walks in first of all like do cops actually walk like that into someone's fucking house like for real this woman looks like she has to take a fucking shit the entire time she's in this film because even in the beginning when you first see her she literally walks so stiff and she looks like she just crapped herself walking to the fucking like group of people on the road but also second of all (laughs) the fucking background of where she was coming into the house, it looked like a fucking like cheesy, like haunted house, like lightning strike going yeah. through the background. A- A- Aerosmith returns pretty much. As soon as she kicks the fucking door and you just Poof. lightning strikes. Very obviously green screened. There's a gun that gets pointed to her head as she's walking around. And you just hear, don't move. I swear, I swear this guy sounded like fucking snake from a uh, metal gear. I know. Right. Like I, th- I thought that, but then you look at him and he looks like rent a Bobby singer from supernatural. Mm hmm. Idiots. Yeah, it's fucking idiots. This movie is more about people than bees at this fucking point because the uh, Jesse and then the one guy get fucking handcuffed and tied to these chairs. And then I think the dad gets tied to it because he's got a daughter or whatever the fuck. I don't fucking know. But the cop and 
this dude's girlfriend starts talking about the end of times and all this crap like that. And then she starts like the cop starts bonding with the daughter because she's like, Oh, I lost my mom too. Blah, blah, blah. And it's it's like the dumbest goddamn exposition ever because like none of this movie fucking matters. It's so stupid. But yeah, that's the relation is basically the cop lost her parents or her dad or her mom or whatever. I don't even fucking know. And this one scenario when she was like the same age as this little girl right now. So she became a cop and yeah, makes excuses for everything that she does. Right. And I think the one part that also made me laugh when the daughter was coming in, she's like, are you talking about the big bees? And I'm sitting here like, you mean the bees that have only inhabited about five minutes of this movie? And we're what, like 50 something minutes in? Yeah, we're over half at this point. God damn, dude. But yeah, like they eventually have these little quarrels with each other and come to terms. They end up going, okay, we need to get the fuck out of here because the bees are coming back. Oh, there's a car in the barn. So the dad and Jesse end up being the ones to go and get the car. And they're panicking left and right. Well, Jesse went from like this tough ass redneck with a fucking like AR to this little whiny bitch. About he was making everybody do everything for him, which just aggravated the piss out of me. But they got the car. They drove like, I mean, literally <laughs> putt putt speed. It looked like Thomas the Tank Engine was being rolled into the script, the screen and shit. Thomas was very cross. Yeah, that car was covered in so much fucking dust. <laughs> like, dude, it looked like was it a Cadillac Escalade or some shit? It was some kind of like minivan or some shit. I don't know. It looked like a fucking. Upper like upper class like sports utility vehicle, and I kind of wanted to know what the fuck was this Bobby Singer looking dude doing with a fucking Cadillac Escalade covered in two inch thick dust on this motherfucker. But honestly, I think this was another car from the beginning just being reused, but they just threw a, a bunch of fucking dust on it. The dad winds up getting stung in the back because they don't even pull up right up to the house. They pull like way the fuck. Away. That's what pissed me off. Oh, did it run out of gas or did, like something? And I happened? think it stalled or something. And they were trying to get everybody into the vehicle first before they actually try and get it to unstall. Right. Is that's what that's whenever Jesse just takes the fuck off. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he's like having his little breakdown moment, which <sighs> he gets his end. Yeah. He just, he winds up, the car winds up dying and then he gets swarmed by wasps or bees or bugs or whatever the fuck we decided they're going to be. Wasp bees. The daughter's dad fucking dies from his bee sting, which looks like a giant bullet hole in his fucking back. Finally, the, the main like, lead guy in this movie looks at the cop, and for some reason this triggers him where he's just like, why'd you have to shoot my friend? And he's like getting all worked up and stuff, so he points a fucking gun at her, and the little girl shoots him in the back, and it made me laugh because she just shoots him, and he's fucking dead, and she's just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you knew what you was doing. You can't sorry that away. That, no. That's not how this works. <laughs> I killed a man. Sorry. <laughs> is he going to come back? This is like the video games. <laughs> no. So the bees swarm outside of this house. And then, God damn, I'm not even joking. They pray the bees away, everybody. They pray the bees away. Like, fuck this movie for real, dude. They don't blow them up. They don't fucking, like, gas them. They don't shoot them. They pray the bees away. And they fucking leave. I mean, they swat them with, like, sticks and shit, and that's about it. They needed the SWAT team. Exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you. I think we discussed it when we were watching this film. Like, they should have, like, a SWAT team just roll out with a bunch of fucking fly swatters <laughs> and just <laughs> just go around, like, swiping at the air like they did in Birdemic with the fucking hangers. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting them, guys. <laughs> just fucking swinging around and just shit. Just a few hundred more. <laughs> There's only five of us. We can take them. That's why we're the SWAT team. Right. So the cop and the daughter walk away from the house, right? So, cause it's just like her and the, and the daughter and then, um, the dude's girlfriend left over or whatever. Yeah. And I fucking call this shit, dude. I was like, they start walking away and then they turn around and the chick, like the dude's girlfriend winds up being the controller of the bees or whatever. Cause she the turns into, a, yeah. And then she's at the end. Thank fuck. Five months later, cars are stranded. Renta Josh Peck from Drake and Josh is just walking up the road. Zombies everywhere. And then the chick from the beginning with the stick cross winds up being the daughter all grown up because the officer's name was Feargo. And I, it was fucking funny because like she has Feargo written on the cross. And that's when we were just like, are you fucking serious? Because this bitch winds up having some kind of like mystical power where she just blasts at the bees. And we're like, where the fuck was this the whole time? Yeah. She turns like super Saiyan in the middle of Colorado. In the end, 
and I, I think I can speak for both of us on this one. Fuck this movie. It's an automatic disqualification. But not only that, like, they pretty much gave away the whole premise of the film on the back of the fucking cover. Yeah, because the last shot of the movie is literally what's on the back of the DVD. Because if you pay attention, you see Homegirl's headband over the head right where the face is. And it's like, oh, come on. And if you thought we were done there, we're not. Hello, everyone. I'm Dylan. I'm Corey. I'm Kendall. Together, we host From the Middle, a comedy and culture podcast about being middle class guys living in the middle of America in the middle chapters of our lives with points of view that fall somewhere in the middle. That's right, Corey. We chat about all things, mostly husband and dad life, geek culture and entertainment from a relatively centrist and regular point of view. We all hear enough about the extreme ends of the spectrum. So we thought we'd create a conversational and relaxed podcast from a moderate perspective. Flyover state? Psh, more like a uh, state fair stock. Guys, what's, what's something that's cool and impactful that is the antithesis of boring? Yeah, I don't know, man. Listen to our podcast. We'd love for you to join the conversation. You'll forget you're not actually hanging out with us. That's From the Middle. Available wherever you find podcasts. And at From the Mid Pod. Everywhere. Next one in line is Arachnoquake. Finally, some good fucking content. Pretty damn decent. We're not even kidding. And we're not even being biased because it's in New Orleans. We're not being biased because its lead actor is Bug Hall from Little Rascals who played Alfalfa. Then also Eddie Furlong from Terminator. Yeah, John Connor in a supporting role where he looks drunk the entire time. I mean, you're in Bourbon Street. You're in New Orleans. Yeah, you kind of have to be. <laughs> but that's what cracked me up. So it opens on a farm. There's like spiders crawling in these eggs that they're batching up or whatever. And a dude gets, he's like, oh, something bit me. Well, the spider winds up popping out of this dude's fucking shoulder. And then he falls into a sinkhole. There's sinkholes in this movie, like placed throughout. That wasn't really wasn't my concern. My concern was they're being chased by something no bigger than the heel of their foot. And that's intimidating enough for them to go, oh, I should back away. I should back up right to this fucking sinkhole. Look to the left, look to the right. Oh, there's land I can run to, but I'm just going to back up into this fucking sinkhole. Or I could just squash this thing with my foot. <laughs> I could slap chop this fucking spider with my foot. Just one, two, and you chopped. <laughs> <laughs> right in the face. But then we get introduced to Bug Hall's character, who is a, um, a little sexual deviant. And a tour guide. For the city of New Orleans, he 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 drives this bus for his. Uh, he works for his dad and works with his sister at this tour bus guide place. Just like lacrosse attraction or something. Some some shit. Yeah, not important. No, I mean kind of, but not really. Then Eddie Furlong plays a high school basketball coach, and he's got this entire female basketball team traveling from Houston to New Orleans, or their baseball team. Baseball, yeah, not base basketball, yeah. It's close enough. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it don't, it it don't, don't matter. fucking matter. It's a ball. It's a sport ball. Go sports ball. <laughs> Go sports. Yeah. So Eddie Furlong goes to check on some chick before he fucking leaves or whatever. This girl is like bitten up and nasty and puking everywhere, but he still just leaves and goes on this fucking trip. He still drives this fucking yeah, bus full like, of people. Okay. Can we address that for a second? Because he was going to find the last girl on the fucking like roster for his team finds her in her room, just completely like devastated, like physically, like she's puking up like foam and shit. She she's dying. Bites. Yeah. And he's like, uh, yeah, I'm just going to have to miss the uh, tour. I'm going to have to go bring these girls through their game, <laughs> <laughs> but leaves the chick in the fucking room just to die. Like he's, he's proving Exactly, like he's playing a literal real life version of himself where he's fucking irresponsible as shit. Like, no remorse for this bitch at all. But yeah, the family goes on the tour, meets Paul. Yeah, his family, like Eddie Furlong's wife and kids, which, oh my God, dude, you mean to tell me 
I realize that we're older now. I realize that I think that Ed, well, how old was Eddie Furlong when Terminator Two came out? Was he like eleven, like ten or eleven or some shit? Probably a little bit older, maybe twelve. Yeah. So, how long ago was that? Nineteen ninety two. Mm-hmm. So that was about like twenty twenty eight years ago. Yeah. Okay, I guess he is. I guess he is in his forties now, like or like early forties or some shit. But we're supposed to believe that this man has like a sixteen year old daughter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you technically could have a 16-year-old daughter at 40, but my God, it just, it's hilarious because he still looks younger. You know, he, you know, Eddie Furlong doesn't look old, but he's obviously not young. He sure kind of acts like he's old at times. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, it just it didn't come off believable to me that this man has fucking kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's not responsible enough to have kids. Definitely a sign in this film. All right. But anyway, so Paul has people on this fucking tour bus, including Eddie Furlong's wife and kids. And they come across this fucking sinkhole where there's this old man on the bus who looks like John Hammond again. And he takes his cane and golf swings the fuck out of one of these spiders into the sinkhole because Paul's about to back up into a fucking sinkhole. And then they just topple onto the tour bus. Like these spiders just jump on this tour bus and they just fucking drive away. And then they go to this gas station. And I stress, this is on a back road somewhere. I am stressing this point. Because at some point in this sequence, they're able to go into the parking lot Look across the street, and there's the city, like, right there. There's no fucking way, dude. Skyscrapers and all. Yeah, I'm serious. It's, it's not even, they're not even hiding it at this point. We were cackling at the gas prices, because what was this, uh, 2012? Yeah, and it was, like, almost $4 a gallon. The gas station attendant has a fucking spider pop out of his neck, so we get kind of a pseudo The Mist situation where they're in this, like, Grove Street area, and they're fighting these fuckers off, like, burning these spiders left and right. Well, finally, one of the chicks, like, stomps one. We were just like, fuck yeah. It took you how long to do this? I think we are what, 25 minutes in? At least 30 minutes into it, and one of them took the time to go, hmm, I can step on this bitch. We're still laughing, though, because they're all popping out of the eggs, and... Paul Bughall just rounds the corner with a fly swatter and he sees them all and he's just like, nope, and fucking yeets the other way. But no, one of the spiders gets attached to old man. Uncle, I remember. Uncle Ben. He, <laughs> he got wrecked. Spider boy got wrecked. <laughs> with great power comes. Uh, Peter, I got wrecked again. <laughs> I don't know how many times. I didn't get the spider powers like you got, you little motherfucking bastard. What if there was like an alternate version of that timeline where Peter actually dies? And Uncle Ben becomes Spider-Man, but he's just old as fuck? (laughs) Dang it, dang it, Peter. (laughs) He runs into Iceman. Damn it, Bobby. (laughs) That's fucking awesome. Is it right? So anyway, yeah, Uncle Ben gets wrecked again. Yep. And they just leave his ass there. They just get in the fucking bus. And then there's finally, there's like buildings blowing up in the city. And there's a lot of stock footage of that happening. And then they establish early on in the movie that the dad thinks that Paul Bug Hall's character is a complete and total fuck up because he was like two hours late for work or some shit. He's always late. He's always fucking up something. Right. So they look over and the sister just looks over at the skyline that's like on fire. And she goes, Dad, the French Quarter. And immediately, like the dad just like, your brother better not have anything to do with this. Yeah, he's going to torch the whole fucking town in New Orleans. Come on. I was three hours late to work. Fuck, burn the town. I hate my dad. I hate my dad. Burn the city down. He always hates me. <laughs> I'll teach you, daddy. I'm going to burn your favorite titty club down. There will be nothing to tour now. Oh, my God. That's like, yes, exactly. Like that's, that's his revenge. He's like, fuck it. I'll burn the town down. Then my dad won't have any fucking city to tour. <laughs> I'm going to start with the titty bars. All of Bourbon Street. <laughs> yeah, he just torches That's the most volatile street in all of the French Quarter. <laughs> he sets one building on fire, the rest of them go. It's like, <laughs> poosh. Big old line of flames. You want proof, Dad? Oh, here's a hundred. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> torches it all. <laughs> My sight is ever clear. <laughs> I see all. <laughs> but no, they end up getting intercepted by the dad in his fucking Mustang. And dude, the way he tail whips that fucker around and just clink against the fucking foam pole. And he's like, follow me. There are giant spiders running around the city. This is not your fault, is it? No, but we need to be careful. There are giant spiders in the city. And his dad's just like, okay. Eddie Furlong, uh, Charlie, that's his character's name. Charlie is driving this bus full of these, this, this baseball team. And he gets a phone call because his daughter has been trying to reach him since all this shit's been happening. And he winds up running over a spider. And crashing into a tree, 
Because why the fuck not? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even a traditional, like, I hit this thing and it made, like, an impact. No, it didn't squish. It didn't get, like, knocked over. It didn't fly out the way. It literally it looked like, to me, it, like, dissipated into the concrete or into the pavement. It just, whoosh, and made him, like, oh, shit. Right. One of the couples on the tour bus thingy, they show up back at the job site. And the guy gives this fucking really pissed off speech about how he's like, oh, I should be in charge and we got to stick together. As all this happens, well, he gets fucking thwipped and nade like right out of the fucking shot and dies. And that girl that was like crying was just, nah, 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 nah. oh my fucking God, dude. That... <laughs> but yeah, they ended up getting on one of the boats. Going down river. Yeah. And then we go back to the bus. Charlie is trying to fight this spider that we find out. I think right here is when they, you find out the spiders breathe fire Mm -hmm. somehow. So they're subterranean. So they're blind. They use echolocation and everything like that. And they breathe fire. That's like a bad fucking mixture right there. Dude, is there anything these spiders don't do? They're not spider men. I mean, that's very true. So they look like they can make a mean cocktail though. Oh yeah. Some baked Alaska. That's it, dude. (laughs) I mean, it just made me laugh. The chick that comes out of the fucking bus to help Charlie baseball swings the shit out of this fucking spider and just hits a goddamn home run. But the sound effects the oh my God, the sound effects when this, (laughs) (laughs) it does, it blows up a little bit. It's like a little flamethrower explodes. <laughs> that. That's why you're my number one hitting whatever the fuck he said. Right. That's when you're that's why you're my number one pitch hitter. Yeah. M- number one bitch hitter. Yeah. But yeah, it- we go back to the boat and they're going upstream and they see another boat and they're like, is it abandoned? Is it abandoned? No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's crawling with spiders. Yeah. And homegirl lost her her boothang. Is just hysterically crying, and she's like, "No, they're gonna eat us! They're gonna eat us! They're gonna eat us!" Ah! And then all of a sudden, it's like Jurassic Park, and this bitch will shut the fuck up. They can't hear us. Their their fucking vision's based on sound. Mm-hmm. So they say to shut the fuck up, but this boat is loud as shit. So nothing's gonna help because they wind up getting on the boat. We were laughing at this scene too because they speed the fuck off, right? And there's like three spiders just skiing across the fucking water. <laughs> yeah, they're like skittering really fast over the fucking water. It was so stupid. It's like, oh, there's another power. <laughs> they walk like Jesus. Right, exactly. And then the boat crashes because the chick is fighting uh, the dad for control or whatever. Well, he winds up hitting the bank and this chick flies the fuck off like really fucking hard, dude. And she just... <laughs> Right in the grass, and then she gets dragged off by spiders and killed. Well, the dad is sitting there at one point, tries to distract one of the spiders so that his his son, Paul, can shoot them. His son fails miserably, like he always does. Yep. And his dad gets burned. He doesn't die immediately, but he gets burned pretty badly. And back at the school bus, we're laughing because the army fucking shows up. Meanwhile, these spiders have, like, caked webbing all over the fucking bus. And drunk Eddie Furlong just comes out. Now that is how you make jambalaya. What? And they just, this is the most useless fucking line in the movie. And this, he obviously had to have been drunk at this point because the reaction on his face, like he just, he, he just couldn't hold himself up. It's like, eh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I swear to God, if they, if they shot this movie in sequential order, like they shot it from beginning to end, he just gets, you know, more and more drunk as the shoot goes on and stuff. I'm in a movie about flame throwing spiders. Okay. Far out, bro. Okay. The, the the daughter comes off and her dad is part of the army or some shit. Well, because of, you know, Charlie being brave and helping them survive and shit, only then does the dad decide, okay, you can come into the city with us to look for your wife and kids, which proves to be fucking futile or futile because the rest of the gang from the tour bus crew is on this fucking bank embankment or whatever. The sister gets kidnapped. The mother has an asthma attack and fucking dies, which they drag that fucking thing. I'm just going to say she dies right here because like, again, they drag it out for 20 minutes and they just drag her corpse around Mm -hmm. to the boat and to an ambulance on shore later on. It's just like, she's fucking dead. Shut the fuck up. Yep. And the dad dies 
and finally admits to his son that he's proud of him and all this other crap. And honestly, like throughout all the movies that we watched, this was the most character development between two characters. Mm-hmm. So I didn't mind it. At that point, we realized that they find the queen inside the subterranean level of the actual ground. And they find out that the queen was the source of all the activity of all the spiders. So then the, basically come to the conclusion that they killed the actual queen and that's going to end everything. Right. Oh, and what's the plot of this one? It's a fracking plot. Oh, that's what woke them all up. Yeah. Because of the fracking mm-hmm. that was happening on the land. It would, it would trigger like trimmer the ground and Oh, it pissed off the spiders. So the spiders are like, we've had it up to here with your fracking fracking. Damn old companies. <laughs> it's a, it's in a fracking quake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what they could have called this. A fracking quake. A fracking quake. A fracking quake. A fracking quake. But anyway, they kind of figure out what to do to kill them as far as, you know, kill, oh, kill the queen and kill them all. Right. Whatever. Eventually they get to the city because this huge fucking spider, we were laughing at this too. Cause like once they escape this place and go to the city, there's a shot where they're zooming in over this river to the city and that big fucking spider just like right across the fucking water. It was so stupid. You see a boat, the spider, and then a fucking Apache. <laughs> And then the army guy, remember, he was just like, do not let the spider get to the city limit at all. And then they turn around and it's like, there's a spider. Surprise, motherfucker. It's like, okay, new plan. Kill that bitch. Exactly. But yeah, the spider rampages through the town, gets onto the the Chase Bank building. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> and there was a reference to this shit in the beginning of when... <laughs> When Paul's dad was just like, oh, you know who that is in that picture? That's me at your age, son. I was doing shit, blah, blah, blah. And he was in this like scuba outfit. So the plan is for Paul to get in this fucking scuba gear. And when he gets into this fucking scuba gear, they play some rip off dun, 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 Terminator music. And he's just doing the slow motion walk across this fucking hill down this embankment into the city. And then he starts running like an idiot. It's like any other drunk person in New Orleans at this point. Just... In costume, with a gun, shooting randomly into the sky. Y'all, this is literally just another day in New Orleans. This ain't anything special. I am uh, I'm. I mean, yeah. No lie. It's pretty fucking funny, though, because I was sitting there like, fucking Scoop of Steve, go Scoop of Steve, what the fuck? Scoop of Steve going postal. Hey, oh my God. <laughs> Running with this fucking, like, oxygen tank and everything on. And the whole top half of his body. The way he looked in that scuba outfit, he looks like every fucking gym rat that fucking skips leg day constantly. So anyway, they blow up this fucking spider because he had some plan to like put C4 explode or to, I don't know what the fuck you said. It was like some copper wiring. It was copper wire flares and like a, one of those big nine volt, like massive fucking batteries. Yeah. So I guess the way he did it was, did he go inside of her? Like he got eaten or some bullshit. He got thwipped into her mouth and then he just basically went through the actual intestines and just stuck fucking flares in there. Came out, zapped it with the battery, the copper, and just... Yeah, yeah. the spider shit it out on the... Shit him out on a web. A web of lies. That's it. And it went poof. And then he dances on the building, and that's pretty much it. That's arachnoquake. Yeah. And now to the biggest steaming pile of shit of the entire (sighs) watch-along. Sand serpents, god damn it. Y'all, like, this, this movie... For the record, we fast forward pretty much 80% of the film because like the last two we talked about, the overall theme of this one was a war movie, like a modern war movie. Yeah. And I think the big reason that we fast forwarded through this one, this movie took itself way too seriously. and was a fucking Tremors ripoff. This movie didn't have the qualities of the other three. And I think, I think I can say this is probably going to be the shortest review out of the fucking four of these. Yeah, because most of the film is just them acting like, you know, military people. They're going through this place. We don't even know where the fuck it is at this point. They're at each other's throats, and then all of a sudden, this one explosion awakens the worms, which they look like fucking worms. They're not serpents. We were kind of laughing at the beginning, though, because like you just open up on this team, and they're walking through this desert area, and they happen upon, like, this, I don't know what it is, like an old construction site or some bullshit. And just a ton of oil barrels around. And we were just joking. Like they would just walk them. They're just like, sir, we've located the enemy. They're disguised as barrels. (laughs) They're really good at it too. 
They've even managed to disguise themselves as electrical wiring. Shoot them. Shoot them. But anyway, yeah, like, so the whole, like Cody was saying, this whole movie is this army team that is in the middle of a turf war with the Taliban. And somewhere in between, these uh, sand serpents come out to attack. The highlights of this movie were fucking the dude that looks like Elijah Wood, who was a private, so we kept calling him Private Wood throughout the fucking movie. The idea is for them to get to this extraction point. At one point in this movie, they're like, we got to fix this radio so we can call out. They fucking leave in a truck to go across the way, and they get to some place, and they find this Middle Eastern dude and his daughter, and they're like, oh, we need a truck battery. So they take a truck battery and drive back to this place when they could have just taken their fucking truck battery out of the vehicle they already had there to get hot wired. Th- this is the movie we're watching, everybody. Yeah. Explain this. But yeah, they eventually get through to their superior and set up a rendezvous point. They end up trying to go there. And I think at this point we've seen four worms, four worms total. Yeah, they just they realize that the worms are more sensitive to you know vibrations and sound. So they drive this truck to the next location that they're going to. It explodes tackles one of the members they pretty much get pinned by the vehicle she's banging on as they get their attention while the other team leaves they find his cave they go in the cave and they find the way to the extraction point basically like, like there's there's really no redeeming qualities outside of the few that we just mentioned in this film because it's really just like we said it's a modern war film of surviving behind enemy lines basically and it's the same dialogue the same you know this is the backstory of most of these people like my kids are at home i can't see them or you know we're tortured you know terrorists terrorists are torturing us basically we need help stuff like that yeah i mean again it just it just takes itself way too seriously and i kind of feel bad for this but i don't so at one point they're in these fucking uh, this, this this cave or whatever the fuck they're underground or some shit. And the fucking dad steps on a fucking landmine and he fucking just looks at his daughter and he looks at the rest of the team and they're like, what's wrong? And he's just like, I stepped on a landmine. I, can't, I don't know how much longer I can hold it. Take care of my daughter. You know, I immediately thought of when he's like, and he looked at them and they looked at him and he they looked, looked at them. Him. And they looked looked at at him. him. (laughs) No, what's even funnier is just having the whole lawn over to you. He looks, hello. (laughs) Is it me? (laughs) You're looking. (laughs) Is it me? You're looking. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) But yeah, they get trapped behind this door. Ah, fuck. Basically. And they convince Isla, the little girl, to go through this little like ventilation shaft inside of this cave. And she comes out, gets intercepted by some other Taliban. They get eaten by the worms and she ends up getting back inside, releasing them from the door. One of the other guys gets eaten by the worms. So now it's just down to three, which is the girl, the main lieutenant, and the, the captain. captain. Well, they figure out a plan to get to the extraction point by using grenades and explosives. Well, at one point, the lieutenant found a suicide belt. And I remember you had mentioned this during the film. He, one of the guys, it was Andrew, I think his name was, Andrews or something. Mm-hmm. He said something. Yeah, okay, so they was like, what is this? And, the, and then the, um, the Middle Eastern guy, I can't remember his name and I feel bad. He was like... Um, Oh, it's a, it's a suicide vest or whatever. And without missing a beat, that fucking racist asshole just looks at him. He's like, will you teach me how to use it then? And I'm like, you motherfucking piece of shit, dude. <laughs> like, God damn. Yeah. If that doesn't bring this movie even lower than it already is, I don't know what will. Oh, it made me glad that he got fucking eaten. Yeah. But yeah, they devised a plan to literally distract the worms by throwing grenades randomly, stopping and then going and stuff like that. So they're trying to trick them so they can get to the extraction point. Well, they eventually get there. They get confronted by, I think it was like two worms. Well, their rescue comes and like shoots one missile. Just one. One. And it 
sways them away to where they can get rescued. But as they're taking off, another one just jumps out at the fucking chopper. We called this shit too. And home dude fucking lieutenant just pulls the fucking cord off his suicide belt, jumps out the fucking helicopter and just click into the fucking worm's mouth and blows it the fuck up. I I saw that shit coming a mile away. And that's, that's the thing that really was fucked up too, because at one point they're, they're centered on the ground before they get in the chopper between these two worms. And he acts like he's going to push the fucking explosion, but it just kill all of them right there. Fucking Metallica, just kill them all. Dude, I swear to God, he he was just itching to blow himself up. I think he just wanted to die. Mm-hmm. I want to fucking die. Same. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much Sand Serpents. I want to fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> just obsessed with it. Oh, That's how I felt about this fucking movie. Dude, okay, I think, I think Arachnaquake is the clear fucking winner this week. Yep, followed by How Shark. How Shark was a close second only because of like the comedy and the self awareness. But like, as far as getting what the movie advertises, like Arachnoquake absolutely 100% delivered on all fronts. Mm-hmm. There was like some so bad it's good shit happening. The shitty look of the spiders. I mean, the fact that we actually got quakes and arachnids in the film uh, as opposed to Tsunami, where there was not a tsunami, nor were they bees, they were wasps. House of something. Yeah. House shark was fun. Cause it was meant to be like stupid. I think our problem with that one was, it was, it was like too long. Yeah. It was like an hour and 50 something minutes and it really could have been like an hour and 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. There was a lot of uselessness in there. And our biggest problem with sand serpents was that it was sand serpents. It's like they just took a war film and just slapped fucking worms in it. Let's make a war film, but tremors. Yeah. No joke. Literally fucked that movie all together. Yeah, and, it clearly lost, like drastically lost in this one. Yeah. Like more so than Tsunami. And Tsunami was like an automatic deco- disqualification. Yeah, but it had some decent like moments here and there. Right. Like at least there was some stuff to riff on and there was some stupidity happening and just like it was dumb. It was we, fucking We didn't stupid. fast forward almost half the film. The one thing we did do with every one of these movies that I thought was hilarious is that at the end of them with all the, uh, the credit music that was playing, we would click the 1.5 speed on the PlayStation. So every song sounded like quicker and that was sound a ton better, tons better than the original version. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, Arachnaquake absolutely blows every one of these motherfuckers out of the water. Actually, right now, while I'm thinking about it, we put out a poll on Twitter earlier this week and I kind of want to see where that stands real fast. I want to see what what the people thought about this. I'm going to read you so far. There's like a a day and 20 hours left on this. Okay. Uh, Because we're recording this Thursday night and I have a really suspicious feeling that this might be what the final numbers are out of 58 votes on Twitter. We said, which film do you think will win the Amazon animal atrocity? And the choices obviously were like in this order, Arachnaquake, house shark, tsunami, and sand serpents. Dead last was sand serpents, which beautiful. Yep. Third was House Shark with 19%. Hmm. Arachnaquake at 31% and Tsunami by 40%. Interesting. I think it was just based on the names. Yeah. Because I can tell you right now that the names that had like Tsunami and then Arachnaquake were probably chosen because of the, the titles. The cleverness behind it, yeah. Right. And I, I could not be more ass backwards. Somehow they picked correctly with Sand Serpents being like dead fucking last. It but, just sounds so typically lame. Yeah, it's stupid. You don't even have to watch the film to know it's lame. It's just like, ugh. It sucked so bad it should be called Sand Slurpents. <laughs> Sand Slurpents. Sand Slurpents. So anyway, that, that's it for this week, guys. Go check us out on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a rating and review. You can leave us a rating and review as well on Podchaser. Check out our merch store in the, com- in the comment section. Check out our merch store in the show notes below. Yeah, because all the comments are from everybody. Like, yeah, go check out the. Show. Yeah, just like, go check out the go check out the merch. No, nobody's checking the merch out. Just go do it. Yeah. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Get us past the two hundred and thirty subscriber mark. That'd be fantastic, fantastic even. In this situation, yes. Yeah. Donate to us on coffee.com. That is ko ficom slash supermedia bros. If you feel so inclined. Social media. All the grams, all the twits, all the books. The book of face. Yeah. 
the Ur of Twit, the Gram of Insta. Come look at our stupid pictures. The Grams. Mm. <laughs> Check out all the other shows on the Odd Pods Media Network. I believe that's it. Yeah, we talked enough shit tonight. But yeah, I think we should get out of here. Go cleanse our minds of the Sand Serpent. Yeah, I fuck, dude. I'm gonna need some bleach to wash that shit out. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna need some holy water to wash off the fucking tsunami. And uh, I'm gonna need some salt water to wash off the house shark. Arachnaquake, you all right? Yeah, you good. You you good, fam. That was Cole Cinema Showdown 60. Until next week, I've been Midnight Agent Raw. Now I'm Okame. Shades on. Oh.